This is Vic Slain Hope, and you're tuning in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give How old were you when you first, quote unquote, jumped off the porch? So when I was young, <laughs> So when I became, so when I, when we moved, so before when we was in a shelter, like I had to be around with my I had to be around my mother often because, you know, like when, when we left the shelter, I had to leave with her. When I go back, I had to kind of like go with her. So it's like, I was around my mother a lot. So I couldn't really have, plus I was still young. So when I first moved to the Northeast Bronx uptown, this is like the first time where like, I have like a, you know, a home since coming back from Honduras. So I got a home. So now like I'm able to be away from my mother. I don't have to go everywhere with her. So I started to like, so when I started hanging out with my cousins playing soccer, we used to like after soccer games, we used to go hang out and, you know, get into like whatever we get into chill. But around this time is when I'm starting to realize like every time I hung out with my cousins, like they was always getting into stuff because they was gangbanging. So have like it'll never be like a regular situation. Like we'll leave a soccer game, we'll go to go get some food or something, and it's like they will see a rival or they will see somebody, and I'm just standing there, right? Like usually, I used to be the guy that they used to just tell me to hold their stuff. <laughs> so they'll be like, "Yo, hold my bag. Yo, hold this, hold that," and and I'm just there watching, you know, like like what the hell is going on? So, um, <laughs> so around like twelve, I started to like go out, and then I started to like sneak out the house, but I would go hang out with my cousins. So, and then, you know, we would go out late nights and they would like, you know, go ride out or go about their business and stuff like that. And I would just be around. But this is like, this is like the beginning of me, like starting to hang out with like people that was a little older than me. And so this was like 12. And then like I, when I turned 16 was like the first time. And it's funny because when I went to middle school and some of my friends will tell you when I went to middle school, I just. You know, I was like a, almost like a fake crip, <laughs> you know, like, but I, so I kind of like, like I said, it, it felt like it was a cultural thing. A lot of my family, like, I, like cousins. And and by the way, a lot of them, this is like a sound note. A lot of Hondurians, like Garifunas, usually tend to be related. Hmm. So, um, some way, somehow, like, because when we was exiled from St. Vincent or whatever, we was like a small population and you know, you know how it goes. So small population becomes big and it was just like a lot of mingling. So a lot of us tend to be family. So it was like a family tie type of thing. It wasn't really like looked at as some game banging stuff. It was more like a, a family thing. And, but that's just our like aspect of it. But then like, so when I was going to middle school, sometimes I would, I would wear like a, a blue bandana. Um, like if I had a, you know, but it wasn't really nothing crazy. I was, I was still kind of like hiding because I wasn't crip and I didn't want to get into nothing with people, you know, but you know, it was kind of like here and there. And some of my friends would tell you, but like when I became 16, I really started hanging out more frequently with them going out to like, you know, back then clubs used to be like, you could go, you could, you, you only have to be 19 to party and 21 to drink or 18 to party, 18 to party, 21 to drink. So back then they were a little more lenient with laying you into certain spots. Like you could just say, I used to say, I forgot my ID. I'm not going to drink though. And you know, the bouncers would be a little cool back then. So when I turned 16, when I really started to like hang out and really start things, but this is in the South Bronx. Mind you, I lived the I lived in the North Bronx, but most of my people, most of the Hondurians, live in the South Bronx. So, and the South Bronx is is kind of totally different than the Northeast Bronx. Even though in the Northeast Bronx, it's, it's 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 a little more houses, more residential area. It's not a lot of housing projects, but it's it's just like in a little kind of like more discreet kind of like wild way but in the south bronx it's just like out in the open it's not a lot of like cut blocks like in the northeast bronx so it, it was a little different mm. okay now you have a video titled how and why I turn crip and part of that is because the from what i understood from the video the bloods were you know being terrorists and kind of you know oppressing the people and 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 talk to me about you know that whole uh, situation to to why you turn crip yeah, so so like I so I mentioned just briefly um how you know I was hanging out with them, but even though I was hanging out with them, like it's almost like sometimes some of the people that used to hang out with us they used to just feel like they was automatically down because like I said like a lot of us are cousins, a lot of us are kind of like related. Um, it was also like it felt like it was some fake cultural stuff because again right there was Honduran mafia crip right so it was like 
a lot of people felt like, you know, it was like an offshoot, like, you know, whatever. Like, it just felt like more familiar, like like a family thing. And then, so, when I moved uptown, at some point, I stopped hanging out. I stopped going back and forth. It, it just it just took a little toll of just going back and forth and hanging Bronx and keep coming back to the Northeast Bronx. So eventually I just, you know, I made a lot of friends uptown. I became cool with some people. And then I realized there was a crip set around where I lived, but the area was still predominantly blood. So I lived, I lived in some blood housing projects. So, which was like Gun Hill projects. So I lived in some blood housing projects and then like the whole neighborhood was like surrounded by blood. And as I grew up, like, cool with each other everybody was cool a lot of people wasn't really like you know everybody in my age bracket was cool it wasn't really into gang but then once we got to high school i felt like people started picking sides like people started either turning blood or they started turning crip but then there also was like the in-between gangs that might have had alliances with either bloods or crips and most most little gangs had alliances with bloods because they didn't want to really go against the bloods so i started to notice it was there was a lot of like stuff going on because my neighborhood was flooded with them and it was it, on, predominantly on Halloween they used to have this thing where like bloods used to go out and cut women like they used to they, I don't know if that was like a part of an initiation thing I don't I don't really know what was going on but I know for like some period of time like this was going on like even my mother used to be afraid to be out on Halloween oh, wow. um I even recall times where like my brother like my some of my friend's sisters used to tell us to go pick them up at the train station or go get them like from, from school or from work, kids used to be let out early on Halloween because they knew like the bloods was out there, you know? Um, and if you even look at the comments on that video, everybody's talking about that, right? Like I remember those times, like even here, people talking from different states that they remember that. So that was kind of like some of the things that were going on, like like robbing neutral people. And not saying that Crips might not have been doing this. I'm just saying like, because there was so many bloods, it was like kind of like more noticeable, I guess. So that's kind of like the things that was going on, like neutral people getting beat up, like neutral people getting robbed, like, you know, a lot of like stuff that I, it just didn't really make sense to me. And that kind of like, at the time, it kind of like, I developed like some kind of like hatred for them. She said she want to see the city bus She don't want to ride the city bus Because she's new to the town I advise, look for truth There is a lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud Dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash 